All right, we are still in the East, and in particular China today. And today's class was on the belief systems in China, Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. And many people consider Confucianism and Taoism more philosophies than religions. And what constitutes a religion and what constitutes a philosophy? You know, this is subject to debate. A debate we'll have another day. But I want to start our lesson with this painting. And this painting is called The Vinegar Tasters. And in the painting, you can see there are three men gathered around a pot of vinegar. Who are the three men? What does the vinegar represent? In the next 10 minutes, we will find out. So one of the three men is Siddhartha, or the Buddha. And Buddhism was our prior class. And to, you know, um, review for a quick moment, Buddhism is predicated on two very important things to the religion. Number one, the Four Noble Truths. Life has inevitable suffering. You cannot avoid suffering by being on this planet. Now, the cause of our suffering are attachments, unhealthy attachments that we have. Now, the third noble truth is we can end our suffering if we can end our attachment. And the end of suffering is also contained in following the Eightfold Path, which will bring us to this enlightened state of nirvana. And the Eightfold Path, if you recall, is doing the right things. Eight, eight things, and I think it's you know, say the right things, you know, live the right job, put forth the right effort. And this was yesterday's class, so I think we remember that. So one of the first three men would be Buddha. And Buddhism has a very, very strong influence on Chinese society and Chinese culture, but it's only one of three. I'll make the argument the second would be Confucius, who has an even more... Um, a prominent place in Chinese culture. And who was Confucius? Now, Confucius was a teacher. He didn't claim to be divine. He didn't claim to have any special powers. He was a teacher who lived 2,500 years ago in China. And before we got into Confucius, I asked these five questions to the class today and wonderful, wonderful answers in terms of how parents and children should treat one another. And if you become a boss, how do you treat the people who work for you? Being a good sibling, being a good spouse, good friend, and I heard wonderful things in terms of respect and communication and, and boundaries and being there for people. And I think I have some really fantastic kids who understand good relationships. But it was typical what I'd expect from an American classroom. Now, when I took the Confucian version of these five questions, uh, I was a little off-putting to some people. So, for example, in Confucianism, there's five principal relationships. The ruler has dominion over the subject. The ruler has the say over the subject, even if the subject is right. No, you listen to the ruler. It's very regimented, very clear, very strict. It is the son's job to care for the father. The son cares for the father. And in a question of who's right, the father is right. This is not my household, I assure you, but the husband has dominion over the wife. The husband has dominion over the decisions of the house. This is cool by me because I'm the oldest, but the older brother has dominion over the younger brother, has say over the younger brother. An older, more established friend has dominion over younger friend. Also, you have to have friends of your ilk. You cannot keep friends beneath you. Very regimented, very clear, not subject to the debate. And once I showed this, some people were really uh, put off by this, but I want to give a perspective. China is a very, very highly populated nation, 1.3 billion people right now, and it's been highly populated for centuries and centuries. You need to keep order, you need to keep structure, and Confucianism does that very, very well. I gave the analogy, if you were to triple the size of your class, you would have me be a lot more strict, a lot more tough, emphasizing order more. But with 90 children in the classroom, what choice do I have? 30 doesn't have to be like that. I'd make the argument 90 it would. It would be very challenging to do it otherwise. And it's based upon status, age, and gender. If you hold a certain position, you are in a position of respect and power. Older people have a position of respect and power more so than younger people. And men have a better gig than women. 
And this is a Confucian temple where they gather and learn Confucianism. Very, very cool architecture. Just wanted to show you that picture. And of all these belief systems, there's a text. Uh, Jewish people have a Torah and the Talmud. Christians have their Bible. Uh, Muslims have the Quran. Uh, Hindus have the Upanishads. Buddhists have their Tripitaka. And Confucians have a book called the Analects. Uh, fantastic book. I've read it myself. It means conversation and it has practical advice on relationships. And you can take something from it regardless of your religious persuasion. I'll give you a little taste of it from the Analects of Confucius. Knowing what he knows and knowing what he doesn't know is characteristic of the person who knows. In other words, once you obtain wisdom, you realize how little you know. When you don't have wisdom, you think you know it all. That's pretty spot on. Uh, making a mistake and not correcting it is making another mistake. Absolutely Confucius. The superior man blames himself. The inferior man blames others. I respect somebody who can say, hey, I messed up. I made a mistake. I'm taking ownership of it. I'm going to fix it. People who displace and use scapegoats, I don't respect that very much. And to go too far is as wrong as to fall short. Good wisdom from the Analects of Confucius. Now, another philosophy that permeated China is something called legalism. And legalism was very off-putting uh, to the class. And I can't say I blame the class, because legalism is another philosophy that, along with Confucianism, keeps order in Chinese society. And it believes that human nature is fundamentally selfish. And... Intellectualism and literacy is discouraged because, quite frankly, it's easier to control ignorant people than it is educated people. I think history has proven that. Three, law is the supreme authority and replaces morality. Follow the law. Period. Done. Don't, no discussion. Follow it. The ruler must rule with a strong and punishing hand. The crooked nail will get hammered down. And war is the means of strengthening a ruler's power. Really, really harsh. But it permeated Chinese society for a long time. Now, on the other side of the coin is Lao Tzu. Now, Lao Tzu, we're not exactly sure, you know, um, when he died. His name means old master. There, He could have been Confucius' teacher. Some say, some say so, but it was, you know, 2,600 years ago. That's a really, really long time. Now, he's the founder of a thinking called Taoism. Now, Taoism was a very, very different... Uh, reaction by my students because a lot more agreeable. And they have a text as well, the Tao Te Ching, and it means the way. And a little excerpt from it. Those who speak now, excuse me, those who speak know nothing. Those who know are silent. These words, I am told, were spoken by Lao Tzu. If we are to believe that Lao Tzu was himself one who knew, how is it that he wrote a book of 5,000 words? And I've read this as well. Very, very good read regardless of religious persuasion. And the major principles of Taoism is the Tao, the first cause of the universe. It's a force, a life force that flows through us. It's an energy, if you will, an energy force. A believer's goal is to become one with the Tao, become one with nature. It's unity. It's, unif it's unifying yourself. Uh, my favorite, the one I emphasize in class the most, is Wu Wei. Let nature take its course. It's knowing when to step back and let things be as they are, going with the flow. So, for instance, if one of my students came up to me and said, hey, I have this skill set, this skill set, I think if I was going to use Wu Wei as a philosophy, I'd say, go with it. You're good at it. Go with it. Don't fight it. Go with it. And man is unhappy because he lives according to man-made laws, customs, and traditions. You really want to be happy. Go with how nature goes. Tap into that. Be part of it unify yourself with it. And this is the symbol, the yin-yang, and people have seen it, you know, in tattoos and t-shirts and necklaces. And it's essentially, if you, it's the reality of life that for a life on this planet, for darkness there is light, for warmth there is cold, for weakness there is strength. It's this duality of existence and finding the balance in this existence and accepting this balance, therein lies wisdom, therein lies a good way to live according to Taoist. And the uniqueness of Taoism. How is a man to live in a world dominated by chaos, suffering, and absurdity? I sometimes ask myself that question. And it's a combination. Now, in addition to Buddhism, these are the new concepts we learned today. Confucianism. It brings structure, morals, 
con control works. And, and legalism is the harsher um, correspond or um, uh, how should I say? Uh, it's a philosophy. It's the harsh rule and order that sometimes is required for a big group. And Taoism is individual freedom. It's being yourself. It's you know to tap into the nature of things and very different flavors very different vibes which brings me full circle to the flavors and here we have the vinegar tasters and it represents the three main belief systems in china the founders of each of the belief systems are portrayed and their systems are examined here in this photo and again these three men are from left to right confucius the buddha and lao Tzu. they're standing around a container of vinegar each has dipped his finger into the vinegar and tasted it the expression in each man's face shows how the vinegar tasted to him. The vinegar they are sampling is a symbol of the true nature of life. Confucius has a sour look on his face, showing that he believes that life is unpleasant. The Buddha wears a bitter expression, showing that he believes that life is harsh. Lao Tzu is smiling, meaning that he is happy with life. And the reality is, every human life has such moments from all three. So in China, to have it combined into one way of thinking. Remember the word syncretism, this blending of religious beliefs, it really does encompass the experience of a human existence.